All right. Uh, you might have something to say about this, Tim, with all your uh, GPU pricing updates. You did one just a few days ago. Are we ever going to see entry-level GPU prices uh, go to what they used to be at 100 euros to 200 euros? What's that funny money? <laughs> or uh, are we just stuck paying 400 euros for what is marketed as an entry-level GPU, an entry-level GPU as the 3060 uh, and 3060 Ti? So go for it, Tim. I think there's been a lot of doom and gloom about this topic. A lot of like people fair, saying, "Fair enough, though." Well, again, it's all valid in the current market, and yeah. people saying, "Oh, you know, GPUs are never going to be. You're never going to get a two hundred dollar GPU again. It's always going to be four hundred dollars." I don't really see that happening as much because there's always going to be people that can only afford to spend that much on a GPU. So there's mm -hmm. always going to be people that want. You know, I can't afford four hundred dollars, so I'm going to need to spend two hundred dollars. If there's enough, if there's literally nothing available, then that's a lost sale. But mm -hmm. whether the question is, are we going to see new GPUs launched in there, or are we going to see more of a focus on older product lines or used GPUs being available for like two hundred dollars, which may happen. But even today, like under normal times, Nvidia would be selling you things like a sixteen sixty or a sixteen fifty in that sort of price category. Similarly, AMD would still be selling you 5500s and RX 580s and that sort of thing. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a, you know, a new generation product, which to be honest, is fine for some times. Like in a lot of these situations, we're seeing all these new products sell out so quickly and you know the foundry capacity is at its limit, pushing out 3060s and above that it makes sense in my opinion to keep some of those older products on the market for longer and slowly see them trickle down in price like an rx 580 or 570 which in the good times was selling for what like 150 dollars or less for some of those mm, lower yeah. end products obviously they're back up now but back then that's what they were available for so i think there's a whole range of things that we'll see happen in that market that we won't just see no cards available in that price range but you know, in the future, if we could see 2060s, for example, come down to like $200, that would be, you know, a really good option for people, even if new generation cards launch because, you know, it progressively mm -hmm. moves stuff down. So, yeah, maybe there'll be more of a focus on new products being $400 and above. I certainly think at the high end, GPU pricing is going to get a lot more ridiculous because people have shown that they can afford $1,500 GPUs, $2,000 GPUs, but yeah. the range is just going to expand and that's going to mean more products on the market more used stuff, the used market's going to be great, all that sort of thing. But again, we're talking in the nice, positive future at this point, which we have no idea when that's going to be. So, yeah. Yeah, I think the real question is, what kind of performance are you going to get at those price points? Because yep. as Tim said, and I 100% agree with, there is a market of people that are only going to spend even like $200 US or even $100 US on a graphics card. And they don't want to buy an AMD APU and NVIDIA certainly doesn't want them buying AMD <laughs> APU, so they're going to provide something at that price point. And they also don't want them buying... I've heard people say, you know, that it's going to be the second-hand market that you'll turn to. Like, again, NVIDIA doesn't get anything out of second-hand GPU sales, so they're not interested in that happening at all. They would much rather sell you a $200 US GPU than have you buy a second-hand yeah, exactly. GeForce 100%. GPU for that price. It's, so... If there's a market there to be serviced, they will service it. At the moment, they're not doing it for obvious reasons. And the, the the reasons are, there's multiple reasons, which is why it's so bad this time. And I guess why we have got sort of the doom and gloom scenario where people are like, you know, this is so bad, it's never going to solve itself. But there's a lot of reasons why availability is what it is and why pricing is what it is. And they're somewhat linked, but there are a lot of different reasons from... You know, shipping costs increasing and, and the difficulty of shipping tariffs, you know, demand from gamers that still hasn't been fulfilled. Uh, the crypto scene, you know, there's so many different reasons. But I mean, 2020 alone, esports blew up in 2020. Millions of people who wouldn't have previously looked at building a gaming PC looked to build a gaming PC. I, I know dozens of people, friends of mine who were never PC gamers. And then they started watching the F1 scene and got into all the F1, you know, advertising they did. And then they started to want to play the F1 game and they're building simulators at home and stuff. And that all requires graphics cards. So the market just exploded. So there's a whole heap of things that happened at pretty much the same time, which is why it is, it's going to take a while to recover. If, if crypto went away tomorrow, we're still looking at a very long time before 
just the demand from gamers is met and we can start going back to normal. So, yeah, it's going to be a while. Yeah, and I think as well with modern games, we're not in a situation like maybe five years ago where you really did need pretty high-end GPUs to run some of those games and there wasn't a lot of scaling between like the highest settings that those games could run at and the lowest settings. Whereas today, mm-hmm. I think I, I think part of this is helped by having still games being made for last generation consoles for things like the xbox series s and then you've got the higher end consoles like the series x and the ps5 that game scaling is pretty good like you can run a lot of games Mm. still look good running on medium settings as opposed to running on ultra settings and there's still a lot of people out there that have 1080p displays as opposed to a lot of modern gps designed more for 4k gaming so that's gonna yeah while we may see this widening of the market where you know, high-end cards might be selling for $2,000 or above. If you're still running like a, a 1080p display or even a 1440p display and games are still looking great running on medium settings, then buying those $200 GPUs is not going to be like the end of the world. You're still going to get a good experience mm-hmm. with that sort of thing. But that's going to be something that we'll have to assess over time just to see you know, how everything's playing out. And as Steve mentioned, it's not going to be an overnight flick of the switch type thing mm-hmm. where everything's back to normal. We're yeah, it's always a slow a slow fall off. So, yeah, we'll keep monitoring mm-hmm. that. 